You're listening to The Cyclone on J360 Radio. With your hosts, Deb and Al. Jay has entered The Cyclone. Hey, welcome to The Cyclone, ladies and gentlemen, on J360 Radio. We are back with episode 15. And with me today is not only the rest of the members of the Cyclone crew, but a special guest making his reappearance on J360 Radio. How's it going, Mark? Pretty good. How are you? Hey, it's been good, man. Been a while since uh, your last appearance. Yeah, it's been, what, a couple months? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, at least. Yeah. I mean, we're halfway through uh, 2007. I mean, 17. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man, you just took us back. Well, you know, I, I would love to do that because I don't like who's in office right now, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, Unless we're going back to Bush, not 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 when uh, Obama started then. Huh? Well, you see, now the joke has ran its course. <laughs> There's only two of us right now, but you might as well get to know us. I mean, you know me from the J-Man show, but this is Dev. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm very interested to see how this is going to go. Um, are we bringing up the preseason? Is that what's going on? Yeah, we can talk about that, too. I mean, we got plenty of time to talk about everything we want. Okay. And you want to know the craziest thing is... Once Alan comes here, you're going to see some very interesting things. Really? Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to get interesting. He will make some very outlandish <laughs> points, and you are going to have to make sure he can back those points up. Because if you won't, he'll get away with it, and you will not care. Huh. Just like how earlier in the chat he was all about the, <laughs> he was all about the Kaepernick thing. So he <laughs> felt like Johnny Manziel deserved more of a shot than Colin Kaepernick. I don't agree with that. And this is why we have these arguments with Alan and life goes on. Yeah, about 14 episodes worth of them, yeah. I, I think the biggest thing with Johnny Manziel that I was disappointed in wasn't so much the partying, but the fact that he completely sucked on the field. I think his off-field issues were the reason he sucked on the field. That's a good possibility, but, I mean, there's been players that have partied up and still did pretty good on the field. I mean, look at, look at Michael Irvin. Yeah, Michael Vick, he never practiced. He never read the playbook at all. He turned out okay. Well, despite his dogfighting issues. Well, yeah. not just, but he was you still a beast, though. Exactly, so... I don't know. I felt like his off-field issues didn't help his situation, but I don't think he deserves more of a chance than Colin Kaepernick. At least Kaepernick showed in the right system, hey, I can be a productive player. See, yeah, he did suck on the field, but he was also a rookie, and he was also coming off of that college high, and uh, it's like he was listen, just set up the That's field. a lot of excuses, man. I'm like, just saying. At the end of the day, it's football, and you can well, kind of get a pass for your first year, but you never got any better once given the chance. Oh, no. He, and it's not like they were trying to start you either. What was it? McCown? Was he like the first one before him or something like that? Yeah. And we giving guys like him a chance over Johnny. Like, something's wrong. Like, you're not. It's something you're not doing. Like, Honestly, the guy, he knows that this is his job and he knows he's going to lose his job if he doesn't straighten up. And he's been warned like several times. So, I guess true. he just didn't, just didn't love it as much as like everybody else did. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's always that one guy that doesn't like his job, always shows up late, always on the last morning, but never really gets fired. He knows that's his job. Yep. But it's not like he cares enough, so. Well, and that, and plus Johnny had to figure that he wasn't going to be on there for too long anyway. Like, but if you could see the writing on the wall, why not straighten up or make yourself look somewhat good so somebody wants to pick you up because... Once a team drops you and you're still on that rookie contract, it's like not too many people want to take a flyer on you. Nah. And, and you know, you didn't even finish out the contract. Did, yeah. Brock, did Brock Osweiler learn that the hard way or what? I'm just kidding. He lucked up on some money, so. Yeah, he definitely did. He's, get, he's getting paid to do nothing pretty much now. Millions of dollars. And he's going to exactly, sit on Exactly. For a guy that has terrible footwork and is not a starting quarterback and proved that to you time and time again with the whole – body of work for a full season, trust me, I, I would trade positions with Brock Osweiler and Any in a day. I saw you mention Tebow, Dev. I, no, I, I, I like Tebow. I think <laughs> Al brought up Tebow. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me look back. Yeah, Al brought up Tebow. Honestly, I think Tebow could have been something, though. I really do. I think he should have <sighs> stayed on the Eagles and developed. I don't know if you agree, Mark, or not, but could have been something there. The thing I like about Tebow is his work ethic. Uh, he put it in. Would he have been a star? I, I don't know about that. Could he have been a decent backup? Better than 
some of the backups we had that season. Yeah. Do I think Chip Kelly getting cutting him and getting rid of him was a bad idea? Yeah, but I don't know if he he may have, may have been a mediocre starter at best. All right. So my thing with Tebow is as unorthodox as his throwing motion is, all that the guy can he's the type of guy that won't lose you a game. He'll win you a game and he'll keep you honest. He just needs a decent defense. You give the guy a decent defense, some offensive weapons. He doesn't need the the best offensive weapons in the world. I mean, Demarius Thomas is a really good weapon. But the guy can win you games. And at the end of the day, all we care about is wins and losses, right? Well, Stats are cool. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, we really just care about wins and losses. So the guy, he has it. He has the it factor. He can win you games. Now, was he going to be a superstar? No. Just, he wasn't. He wasn't going to be the caliber of quarterback he was in the college. And most guys that are really big in college never turn out to be that good in the pros. But I like him. He had a shot to be good, but teams just didn't want to deal with, you know, the Tebow factor and, like, how much publicity he drew. Because, let's be honest, NFL teams like to keep the sen- the media focused on the coaches, the game plan, kind of them. It's, it's an ego type of thing. Right. Focus has been the head coaches, football, 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 football. Same thing with the NFL, it's the ego thing. Everything has to be the shield, the shield, the shield, the shield. Once it derives from that, the NFL doesn't like that. Teams don't like that. Coaches don't like that. Thus, there's a rift, and then guys kind of – like, it may last for a season, but then guys get thrown to the wayside. So, it's kind of how it is. It's unfortunate where the NBA is more player-centric. The NFL is definitely more league-centric. There's team-friendly contracts. There's the image of the shield. With the NBA, the NBA players are the face, you know? It's like – the logo is a, in a, you know, Jerry West, so this is kind of how it is. Okay. Well, at the same time, though, looks over at my Kyrie Irving statue. Someday, man. <laughs> Hold on. Speaking <laughs> of statues, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Paul says he wants a statue. Do the Clippers deserve a statue? Yes or no? No. What have they done to deserve it? Exactly. <laughs> I feel like you need your own building before you can get a statue. It's like you're still sharing the room with your older brother. You're a more successful, better older brother with more championships and, and glamour and history. How many wall scrolls does the Clippers have? Don't they have like two and the Lakers have like how many? Too many to count, man. Yeah. Good That's job like on saying... participation. I mean, at least they were there, right? I'm, but I'm just saying, Chris Paul feels like he should get the statue. I mean, mind you, he's probably the best Clipper in known history, which isn't saying much because they've never had a rich history to begin with. But to win a statue, that's a bit much, man. Wait till you get your own building. Like, yeah. wait till you move out of your room you're sharing with your brother before you want to make, you know, wild statements. Yeah. So but, but remember... They were the team. The Lakers were being rebuilt. So, yeah, the Clippers. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're nice. all the Clippers fans. Nice, good job. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah. four years. S- superior nice, LA team. Yeah, remember all that bullshit? The greatest, the greatest four-year run of mediocrity in Ever. LA history. <laughs> Yo, five years, man. Five years straight getting knocked out in the first but, round. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great, the golden years of the Clippers, getting knocked out of the first round and underachieving once again. All right. Yeah, Get a statue for that. And on the mantle, say, we were there. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I'm curious about this new 76ers team. Yeah, me too, man. I'm not not sold on them yet, but... I I can't sell on them either. Just just because I feel like... At this point, I almost feel like they're deliberately creating injuries for these players to redshirt them for a year to get them ready for the NBA. Because here's my whole thing on the draft, right? Right. The draft gives you underdeveloped potential star players. They, like, give you the eggs and tell you to make an omelet, pretty much. That's pretty much what you have to do with these, like, players coming in. Because most of these players coming in, they still have weaknesses in their game, still not mentally ready. Some of them still aren't physically ready. So you have a really nice egg. But if you don't make it right, you either get a really good omelet or a crappy omelet. And it takes about something like four, almost five years for some of these guys to really become stars in the NBA. So my only problem with the Sixers is I don't like it all being rested on Joel Embiid's health. Which if you look at recent history, seven footers with foot injuries don't last long. It never ends well. And that's the factor for me because I'm always keeping an eye on him. You have to at this point. 
it literally is ride or die on Joel Embiid. If the guy can stay healthy, you have a nice up and coming dynasty. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't work out, you pretty much have the Portland Trailblazers in the East. At one point, they had LaMarcus Aldridge, Brandon Roy, mm-hmm. and Greg Oden. Two of those players' careers ended because of injury, and LaMarcus just didn't work out inside San Antonio. Yeah. Anything can happen with it, to be honest with you. I think the 76ers just really love injury prone players. I mean, look at. Andrew Bynum. Yeah. Man, that, that was sad. Carter Williams. That didn't work. Elton Bryan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember oh, back when they had Weber. Oh, Chris. Man, that was, those were bad times. Ever since Iggy left, things have been kind of weird for the team. Well, that's when Sam Hickey went tanker bust type of mentality. Yeah. Listen, it paid off now. The guy knows talent, but he's not really good on health. I mean, the way he went about it, I mean, everything looked good on paper until actual practice. Hell, the Clippers look good on paper. It's like everything looks good on 2K until they update the injury roster. And then that becomes a problem. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Hey, uh, Mark, if you ever have your PS4 ready, dude, like, you can do some crossovers into the power play now since we do the gaming and stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I got a lot of sports games on my PS4, but the most recent NBA game I got is 2016. Oh, yo, you got to get 18. They're doing some nice stuff in my GM mode because I believe they added a bunch of stuff. Like, you can draft guys and overseas players and stash them overseas for a couple years before they come over. You can have two-way contracts. You can have guys play only your D-League team and your NBA team. They're adding, like, stuff with, like, the graphics. It's looking good. They're still releasing a whole bunch of other stuff as far as footnotes, but the game's looking nice so far. Yeah, I get into them every year. I actually had NBA uh, 2K17, but I got so absorbed in it that I was spending so much time on it, so I got rid of it. <laughs> understand that's how i feel about madden so i can't play it yeah like i was so into like just friends just every night i'm like i can't do this anymore so i just had to stop madden like years ago and i don't want to do it to myself i don't want to get it because i feel like i'm just going to get like wrapped up in it and then it's just going to go all downhill from there yeah i heard that the new one coming out is supposed to be that's what I hear, but I just tell myself, stay away, man. Just, just <laughs> stay with 2K. I can play 2K and have a healthy lifestyle. I just can't do it with Madden. Yeah, it's like a drug, man. It gets really addicting. Yeah. Wait until I create myself on it, man. Going all the way, man. We're going to the playoffs, and then I break my knee. But I still get all that money, though. But I never get yeah. it in the real world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll just be like Brock Osweiler, There you go. Listen, oh, man, oh, that's oh. that's a, like that's, that? a, that's an ambition right there. Brock Osweiler's living the dream. Yeah, now he has the life. Yeah. Uh, Plus, he's well, technically a Super Bowl champ. Technically. I mean, Listen, he, what more could you ask for? You win a Super Bowl, so your your legacy is solidified in your mind and, you know, the general public. You're getting paid like a star, even though you're not. And you have, the, you know, the glamour position, quarterback. Like, and you don't have to be great. You can fizzle out the league from now on. You can you can just get by. That's all you have to do. Just yeah. get by. I mean, considering if we're not analyzing and paying attention to how exactly he got that credibility, yeah. L- it, listen, it doesn't matter how you get it. It's how you keep it when you get it. <laughs> yep. He's right. Yeah. Hey, uh, What's up with you? Not much. Cyclone night. And here's your Yo. special guest for tonight, man. Mark McCaffrey. Good friend of mine. Hello. What's up with you? So you got your explanation together, Alan, huh? What, how about the travesty that Brian Jenks hasn't been signed yet? And he had to go to China? Oh yeah, I have plenty. Uh, Out the gate, we're gonna go we're gonna go there. So Jeremy Lang can get like a three year deal with Brooklyn? Huh, he Wait. had that deal before last year. He had it. But yeah, a player with the talent that could be a game changer, probably better than anything Kelly ever could ever do. Ryan Jenks, he has to play in China this year. J.R. Smith played in China. Shut up! <laughs> wait, 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 what? Wait a minute. Brandon Jennings has the skills, you said? To be a game changer for who? <laughs> he should come home to Milwaukee. Alan, he's not. He's going home to Detroit. He, he's not. Uh, you know what? Teddy Bridgewater is winning the Super Bowl this year. Totally. Done. Really? I will slap you upside your face. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater man. Has been training he, he's not in the even Himalayan ready. mountains. He's training, no, he's dude. Himalayan mountains, getting ready to take Sam Bradford's spot. Matter Wait, of fact, they're that, willing to give it to him. Is that Johnny Manziel's thing? Remember, he was training in the mountains. Nope, that was that was Ricky Williams. Yeah. 
Jared Mansell is better than Bridgewater ever will be. No, he is not, nope. Alan. But I'm gonna okay, go ahead and say. Oh, all right. You wanna go there? Kwame Brown's better than Brandon Jennings. Done. I will oh. kill you. Oh, Marcus <laughs> Smart is ten times better than the Brandon Jennings will ever be. Brandon Jennings will never have made the redeem team I love in 2008. My I mean, after all, you know, John Wall Cameron is the face Payne of... Cameron Payne is better than Brandon Jennings. Well, you know, Cameron Payne... Brandon Jennings did score 50 well, points actually, in Actually, John, John oh, Wall is the face of the team year. more so oh, than Brandon Jennings. Goodness. Let's talk about something recently. Oh, I forgot he's playing in China. Yeah, he is. You know... Are we done with the Brandon Jennings now? Never. No. He's going to hold okay. on to him forever, but the thing about it is he's not going to retire in Milwaukee. He's going to retire in Detroit. That's just the way it's going to be. No. Yes. He's There's not a home. damn thing you can do about it. He, he his home is in Detroit. Actually, he's a California kid. So well, well, yeah, but still, it's never going to be. It's not going to be in no damn Wisconsin. We know that. Hey, Jay, remember when we were friends? Never. Remember when me and you and Dad were all friends? You know what? I, 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 I remember. I mean, we were until you started talking about Brandon James. Yeah, I remember Civil War, yeah. Alan. All right. Sam. I remember going to war. We're also talking about the NFC teams this time. We talked about the AFC teams last time. Okay. So, um, Alan, down. would you like to, if you're done being butthurt, uh, start us off with um, the NFC North? Give me a sec. I mean... I know the teams. I just want to look up their stats and Because everything. make sure that the Minnesota... I know. We do not start with the NFC North. We Why not? Yes. Do that. yes. No. Come on, dude. We just Come talked on. about how Teddy Bridgewater is going to take back no. the reins. And he's <laughs> no, going to make a difference. With the East. We, know. we have to start with Can the we East. start with the North? Come on. I just got to go on my rant. It's the, it's the beginning of the show. I go on my Teddy Bridgewater Fine. rant. And then we move Fine. on to life. So what Fine. team are you starting we'll with? We'll start with the North, and we'll start with your team that you've been so badly me for in the last 28 seconds. Well, I'm glad you so agree the, about so it. So the Minnesota Vikings, what is everybody's thoughts on this? Uh, I, I'm going to start with Deb because you have been just so eager to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you. Since the greatest quarterback of all time was drafted out of the school of Louisville, Teddy Bridgewater, I'm he gonna- set back. Right, We all have setbacks in our career, but he has been training like never before to come back. And now he will lead his team and ride off in the sunset with the Lombardi Trophy that he was always destined to have. And thus, my friends, is the beginning of the legendary story of Teddy Bridgewater. Hold the applause, please. Mark, can you put some insight on this? I, I went the last. I, I'd love to put some insight on this. First off, I, I like Teddy Bridgewater. Not thrilled about the injury. Not sure how he's going to come back. Haven't really seen, it's kind of, at this point in time, hard to really see how he's going to look when he comes back. I believe he was a good quarterback before he got injured. The Super Bowl, maybe a little bit of a stretch this season. Sometimes you got to be a little delusional. I am every season. I'm an Eagles fan. Hey, we're in the same boat. Oh, sh- crap. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, I'm a Chargers man, fan. Man, you're in for the long haul. Uh, anyway, it's like Kevin Cobb was your answer. Oh my god, uh, I never believed that. Oh come on, dude, he was never an answer for us. He was an answer for the Chiefs. <laughs> well, nope. come on, man, even, no. man, for that one game you guys had home until Michael Victus came and tore it up. I think Nick Foles was more of the answer on a bad day instead of uh, Kevin Cobb. Hey, 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 Nick Foles looked pretty good. I said on a bad day, Dev. He had okay. one good year, then he just sucked everywhere else. Well, no, he's back home now. I know. Home? It'll be a decent... He's back in Philadelphia. Yeah, he's back okay. here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's like that kid that moves out, can't really yeah, make it, it out in the outside world, and comes back home. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, you see, the, it, yeah. you, you see, you couldn't, you couldn't make it in the outside world if your team is the Rams. Come on, be r- real. Come on, you know Dude. what I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just great. saying, that, that's really familiar. This is like that kid that moves out too early, not quite ready for the outside world, ends up coming back home, you know, like those who, those who pass. No, you guys have the weirdest situation because not only did Foles come home, who was that other quarterback that was the back of the Eagles that year when your rookie like played so great? He went back home to the Saints. It, it's a really weird situation. Uh, uh, Chase said. McDaniels, right? Um, and, yeah, Chase yeah. Daniels, yep. Yeah. But he was never really a good quarterback to begin with. He, he never had a shot. 
Well, he was just seat filling, but you guys know how that goes. I mean, wasn't he with? Wasn't he getting drafted by like the Jaguars? No, no he started with, with the Saints. Did he go to the Chiefs at one point? And then yeah, he was on the Chiefs. Yeah. Doug oh, I, I'm think, wait. Them. I'm thinking of Blaine Gabbert. Sorry. Yeah, we'll He's, talk about that. Well, later. well that's the but first no. I ever heard of that. Thinking of Blaine. Anyways, Gabbert. let's go back down to our thing. So, but it was uh, it was a Jaguars quarterback that didn't write quite pan out, and they've been through a couple. Hopefully, Blake Bortles doesn't turn out to be that. I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, so let's get back to the topics at hand here. So, what's your thoughts on Minnesota? Um, what uh, you have to get your thoughts, like Bridgewater. Yeah, he's not starting this year. He's not going to even be a oh, starter. Oh, totally is, but go on. No, no. he. They we don't we at the Cyclone yet. firmly believe in Teddy Bridgewater, except for Al, and that's how we feel. Oh, my God. Dude, his one year that he was good, he threw 12 touchdowns. Dude. And that was good. See, that was a step in the right direction. Exactly. A sign it of takes what's a little to delusion. Come. You know he had Adrian Peterson. Work. He doesn't have that anymore. Well, well, yeah. You see, the thing about it is he doesn't. He was need holding that him muscle. back. Yeah, Adrian holding Peterson was holding Bridgewater back. Yeah, he sure yes. was. Yep. Okay. He didn't All cover right. him during that hit, though. But still, you know, <laughs> you can always miss it. He was exactly. injured in the off season, and he stepped two steps back. Well, look, back like I said time. before, when you're practicing in squads, it's a very dangerous thing. Exactly. Oh my God. But anyway, next team, Al, because uh, you know how I feel, don't you? No, nah, Jay, why don't you go on your full thing on Minnesota? I I'm mean, not even going to do mine. I, 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 no, 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 I totally did. Because this is Bridgewater's country. And it's going to be I, right there to welcome him home because Sam Bradford ain't going to do anything for them like he did for the Eagles. Moving why am on. I on this show tonight? Anyways, let's continue. <laughs> My God, everyone's against me for this one. Just like you guys are against me on a lot of things with Brand Jennings and everything. My God. All right, let's continue this. All right. Why does it always have to be about you? Because you guys like – so we have the Green Bay Packers. Um, I will actually start myself on this one. The Packers did not improve their defense at all, really at all. Personally, felt they should have fought fired the defensive coordinator years ago. But still, for some reason, I still see them winning the division. I see them going 10-6 winning the division. Dev? NFC Championship. Fair enough. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the league. Listen, Aaron Rodgers is going to get you the playoffs, hands down, unless he has a terrible year. which he And he had a terrible, like, half. The first half of the year, terrible. Second half, got way better. They made the playoffs and, you know, they they were that right there. So, I feel like if you have Aaron Rodgers, you have a shot at the NFC Championship. Now, they're going to go to the Super Bowl. It's 50-50. Depends on how the matchups go play, come playoff time. But, I'm just saying these guys have a shot at the NFC Championship. I have, got- I have this weird thing with the Green Bay Packers, too. Was Mike that- McCarthy refusing to free agency is going to catch up with him. Why? Because Ted Thompson has... He drafts so many busts, it's catching up with them. Like, the Falcons had no problems exposing it during the NC Championship game. They were blown out. Well, problems become magnified during the playoffs. We all, like, it's it's always apparent. I didn't even get how they got that far in the playoff game. Hmm. And it was Aaron Rodgers who single-handedly carried that team. But, of course, what do I know? Like, think about it. The Patriots won with less. And Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, is on the same boat with Tom Brady. So, what do I know? But there's always those few quarterbacks that make their team better, and there's other quarterbacks that need a system. So uh, they're already a done deal, man. They're they're going to the playoffs. There's what what else can you say? What about you, Mark? So my view on the Packers is well, I'm not really a fan of the Packers, but I do know that they're a good team, and that Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback. I believe they'll get to the playoffs. I don't think they'll get out of the division round though. Mm. That I agree with. Okay, so who do you think can beat them in the divisional? Because at the end of the day, it comes down to matchups. Like, who's your game of matchups? The Vikings. I'm just kidding. Oh, they face the Vikings, it's over. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of my thinking on it, is the matchups. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, teams like the Falcons, who are actually getting better than they were last year. As much as I hate to say it, the Cowboys could take down the Packers. And keep in mind, I'm an Eagles fan through and through. I also think the Eagles could take down the Packers, though, even though their defense is kind of lacking in the cornerback spot. The Packers' defense is always lacking. That's always been their problem. And they do not fire the stupid defensive coordinator in John Capers. 
Just get rid of him. He's like 70 years old now. No, he's legendary. He has to stay. He has seniority. Stop. Never. <laughs> oh my! But don't worry, though. Teddy Bridgewater will throw for 600 yards and beat the Packers. Single well, that's because at the end of the Thank day, you. Teddy Bridgewater can't be up. beaten. You understand what I'm saying? The only way Teddy Bridgewater can be destroyed is by himself. You guys took Teddy Bridgewater and I took Brandon Jennings from a random player? Yes. Well, you see, the thing is, Bridgewater is legendary, Al. I'll never forget that 12 TD season. He did a great job, didn't he? he exactly. Nobody ever handed off the ball to Adrian well, Peterson well, better well, than Well, him. let me tell you this, Alan. Everybody underestimates Gohan until he gets mad. Exactly. I never seen him throw a ball past 25 yards. Because Teddy Bridgewater is like Gohan. He's saving for happen. himself. <laughs> Go. He's saving himself. I get it now. You know, it was like that. Remember that episode of The Simpsons when the Japanese mafia was fighting the mafia from the uh, Springfield? Yep. And when and you, you don't you look. Saw, yeah, and you saw that little white guy, and he goes, oh, he hasn't done anything yet. But you know it's going to be good. Yep. Yeah, okay, I see what you guys... Okay, Teddy Bridgewater will throw for 18,000 yards. See, now you're overestimating, Al. You need to be correct with what you're trying to enunciate here. Now, 18,000 yards. Shame I think on you. Do it. Not even John Elway in his heyday could do that, Al. Moving forward, though... I thought McNabb was better. I got, got to give uh, McNabb some respect, though. He was pretty good yeah. McNabb wasn't bad. I just yeah. feel like I wish he, I just wish he had better receivers. I'm yeah. just saying. Speaking of that, do you think McNabb will ever get in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Yes. If he should. T, if T.O. gets in before, if T.A. gets in, McNabb definitely gets in. Yep. Uh, well, you, you guys are gonna hate me on my opinion of McNabb. Oh no! I, listen, I, I'm oh, willing to hear. Oh, oh. All right. Well, all right. McNabb accomplished a lot. I'll give him that. But I really think that if he wasn't in Reed's system, I don't think he would have been. I wouldn't. I don't think he would have accomplished as much. Okay, so all right. So what was he drafted? Nineteen ninety nine. So if we go back to the ninety nine draft, and he was drafted by somebody else at the top, he wouldn't have flourished the way he did. I just feel like in his system, Reed made it really easy for him. I mean, I don't. He was reasonable with Washington. I mean, but he was a seasoned vet by then. But we're just saying, like you know, a young Donovan, fresh out of college from Syracuse. Yeah, when he was still a running and it, quarterback and everything. Yeah, before he developed any type of like really pet, really you know, type of passing game. Do what the NFC Championship was it twice? I think it was three times. I think it was. And that I think it was it, it was the Super Bowl once, but how many times do you go to NFC Championship? At least three. Yeah. I think, I or was it, was it three. four times? Was it? It was 2009. I think yeah. they went three times before they got to the Super Bowl, right? And then. Mm. The 2009 season. Yeah, yeah, I know people. I know people think less of Donovan because, like, oh, Jeff Garcia d- drove them way deep in there. But like, people are forgetting that Jeff Garcia was an absolutely underrated, fantastic quarterback. Well, he was, but still, you know, you can't take it away from Donovan McNabb there for a moment. No, no, McNabb is a for sure Hall of Famer. I'd actually make a case like Garcia should be at least considered. mm Hmm. That was a really good quarterback. I I loved the way Garcia played. Yeah, I loved I loved this game. Honestly, though, you know the um, God, I'm trying to think of who the worst. Wait, never mind. Kevin Cobb comes back to mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's okay, okay. okay. Let me, you get a chance to re- wait. Wait, hold on. Okay, stop. Stop. What? Stop. What's the problem now? Come on, man. You. He Listen, never even had a chance with my ball. Oh, he goals. never even had a chance. Yeah, that's a real good excuse, Al. What? Well, Come on, why are we making excuses for a quarterback that wasn't that good? No, I need a case for EJ Manny be like one of the worst. EJ Manny was awful. Tyrod Taylor is a close second. Well, actually, no. Tyrod got skills, just Allen's people don't know how to use them right. I mean, what would Rex Ryan at the helm? I mean, either make well, a Well, he's gone him. now. Well, yeah, he's Doesn't gone now, difference. but I mean... While he was there, y'all could have had some out of Tyrod, but nope. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Tyrod was a bad quarterback, but I also don't think he did that bad under Rex no, no, Tyrod Taylor is the definition of an 8-8 eight and eight quarterback. That's it. So, so is Sam Bradford. Yeah. Stop yeah. it. Which is exactly why Teddy Bridgewater is going to take back his drone. 
I love you taking need to back to stop Teddy. it, Dad. Sam Bradford will probably lead to the Vikings as well. Well, well granted, you know what, though? I, we're talking about the same Sam Bradford who had shoulder injuries in Oklahoma. The same Sam Bradford who is the definition of 8-8 eight and eight his rookie year. The same Sam Bradford who can't stay healthy. The same Sam Bradford who went 5-0 and oh with the Vikings and then flamed out like flat soda. Yeah, but not only he that, though. Yeah, like those same Vikings had absolutely no offensive line. Remember his that time on the Rams had no offensive line. Now, now, remember his time when he was on the Eagles, right? Where he held too long to the ball and wasn't passing like anything. And yes, because. And also, yes. Because Jeff Fisher was such a brilliant head coach. And yeah. Chip Kelly is an offensive quarterback oh, coach. Man. And look what happened to Sam oh Bradford. Chip, Ke- Chip Kelly was a legend, dude. Chip, Chip Kelly. Kelly. Oh, no. oh, oh, God. Go, go ahead. Take us back to school, Mark. What about yeah, Chip Kelly? Dude, I can't even troll this. So, continue. I, I can't even fathom what Chip Kelly must have been thinking pulling the moves that he pulled. And then his offense was vanilla. The only thing about it was that they were had the quickest time for snapping the ball. Yeah, the Wildcat. Pretty much. It Rock was a fast version that. of the Wildcat offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because how fast did the Wildcat get figured out? It took a year. Oh, it didn't take long. Yeah, didn't the Dolphins start that in the NFL? And then after one mm-hmm. year, it was like it was all figured out. Well, not, o- yep. not only that, but they did it better. Yeah, yeah but yeah. my thing is... Chip Kelly was pretty much playing general manager on Madden with actual players. Yeah. Yeah. I can't boost their stats. What the hell's going on? You know, <laughs> exactly. You, you know what would win a Super Bowl? What? Having nothing but Brandon Jennings on the team. Oh, you're lucky I didn't have the patience to Greek trait Brandon Jennings in NBA 2K because I would so make a team full of Brandon Jennings. You said I, you were. You were talking a big game. You never did it yet. Just because I didn't have their patience to create <laughs> Brandon Jennings as a created player with the same exact stats and then copy him to a team ten times. I just didn't have the patience. I couldn't do it. Do uh, it. Well, you know, that do explains it. a lot. But to be honest with you, though, John Wall is the face of that team. And nobody gives a damn about no Brandon Jennings. Well, Jennings is in playing in China. And by the way, John Wall is fantastic. Yeah, so, um, you know, you know. At the end of the day, nobody is be like Brendan. Who? Oh my god, we have to get Tom with the show. Oh my god. Oh man. But you know what? Though going back into it, how about those Chicago Bears? Though, hmm? Got Mitch. Oh. Mitch is the future, y'all. <laughs> he gonna do all oh, right for god. us. He's gonna make things happen. So Isn't that uh, right, we're gonna get in Mitch we trust I, I T-shirts. Met, what I a friend you. we have in Mitch. Whoa. Uh, you know, Mike Glennon, the one year he actually got the start, wasn't terrible. No, he wasn't. But here's my thing. Like, it's just... <laughs> 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 this, is, this is what I feel like it's like. It's like it's like you finally get a chance to, you know, go out with this girl. Everything's nice. And you find out she's talking to other guys. And you feel like you're inadequate because they had somebody else. And you kind of feel insecure now. That's kind of how Mike Glennon is. He's like, yeah, I got the money. I'm the guy. And then you look and it's like, who the hell is that? Yep. <laughs> ah, the friend zone. Oh, that's right, because they got uh, Tampa Bay got um, Winston. What the year after that, and then Bears just picked up Trubisky. Exactly. Yeah, it's like you're always it. getting overlooked for some new guy. It, it's you terrible. Have like ten days of freedom. <laughs> God, we are. It's awful. it's sad. It's like you're like, oh, I'm a great guy, and then you know you're constantly getting overlooked by somebody new. And it's like, is it me or is it them? And oh, it's, it's definitely you. Exactly. Oh, I, I felt you just don't so realize bad it. for Glenn. And not only, not only did they just draft this guy, they traded up to get the guy. <laughs> yep. And they traded up with a team that had no intentions to get that quarterback anyways. So what does that say about Mike Glennon? Well, it, it says two things. One, either the coach or the GM is on, on the hot seat and they need to sell tickets. And two, they don't think that they can sell Mike Glennon to the owner. Good point. When was, when was the last time the Bears drafted a quarterback in the run? What was it, like Rex Grossman? And oh. we see how well that turned out. Oh, Grossman. Yeah. Because Grossman was the future, too. They were yeah. better off with, um, what the hell is his name? Kyle Wharton. Yeah. Yeah. They were better with Kyle They were better for Brian Greasy, for crying out loud. I mean, while you're at it, why don't you just throw Jay Cutler in there, too? Oh, Cutler was not bad. Cutler, listen, Cutler had issues. Yeah, Cutler had issues, but I will always, on the show, I will forever make a case. Cutler was not a terrible quarterback. Actually, who was the last great quarterback for the Bears? I honestly couldn't tell you. Shit. Well, let me think. Probably McMahon? Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. 
That was the last time they won a Super Bowl, though. It was with him, right? Yeah, yeah, but even then, like, I think I think the defense won that game, though, because they weren't doing anything um, yeah. offensively. That's right. They had the best defense. So, yeah. yeah. But hold on. I want to get back to Jay Cutler real quick, because there's one to- topic that always gets me about Jay Cutler. Oh, yeah? What about him? You remember his rookie season when he was playing on the Broncos and they had Jake Plummer as their starting quarterback? Yeah. Yeah. Big Plummer was actually doing damn good. I believe they got to the playoffs that year, and instead of playing Jake Plummer, they played uh, Cutler. And that, like, bothered me ever since because I felt like Jake Plummer could have actually done something that year. And didn't and he, he, like, retire and just never bothered to come back? He retired because they traded him to the Buccaneers the next season. Mm-hmm. And he, he didn't want to play. Yeah. I remember that. You know yeah. what? I, 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 you know what? Shout out to Jake Plummer for sticking to his guns. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. But yeah. um, huh? I wonder, was it like, was it like a pay cut or something like that, or was it just? I guess it was probably disrespect. Yeah, he wanted to be on the Broncos, but they traded him to the Buccaneers. He didn't want to be on the Buccaneers, so he never showed up. But that's when the Buccaneers also had Jeff Garcia and Luke McCown, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, well, one last thing about Mike Lennon. Um, I don't think he should feel that bad because pretty much Mitch is pretty much set up to fail. And pretty much if Mitch plays terrible, you still have your job. And there's going to be so much pressure on him to start. So even if you do bad, you're going to get your starting job back. Because all the pressure is on Mitch now to be the guy. And there's a whole bunch of pressure on him. He's never played an NFL game. And he has bust written all over him. So I don't think we should feel too bad for Mike Glennon. Because all he has to do is play well enough and keep Mike Glennon on the bench. And he still gets paid either way, I'm just saying. Yeah, he's getting pretty good. Yeah, I mean that that sounds like a pretty good way of going about it, but I mean if you want to look at it from a positive, but still he still looks like the guy that gets overlooked by some other like he's with the girl and he like gets cheated on every time because he gets overlooked by some new guy. Why we gotta make fun of people that don't have no game, man? We we got chill with that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm just Sometimes, saying, you know, it's that's, it's that's the best comparison that I could do right now. Uh, so are we gonna talk about the Lions? Yeah. Oh yeah. We need, to, we need yeah. to get to the Lions because um, man. Honestly, I think those guys are gonna be in the playoffs. I really do. I think I, this is their I year. Don't, I don't. I don't see it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't see it. I mean, because you know, got Matt Stafford there. Got um. Well, he's the one. I who mean, okay. So pretty much look at it like this. We all knew Randy Moss was great without Dante Culpepper, but what would Dante Culpepper without Randy Moss? So that's kind of how I feel with Matthew Stanford and Calvin Johnson. I can agree with that. Yeah, but, you know, Cal- Calvin's not even there this year, right? So Exactly. So what, what, are, what is who is Matt Stanford without Calvin Johnson? Well, that's going to be the story that's going to be written this year, then. I don't see them making the playoffs. I see them, at, at best, competing for the last wild card spot and then losing it. I can see yes. that. I can't see them doing any better than that. Their staple used to be really tough defense, and then, you know, offense, they would throw the ball a lot and, you know, do it by committee, by running back. They've lost in Dominican Sue, a couple other defenses, uh, defensive components that were really the staple of their defense, because they were definitely front on the defensive line. They were really big there. They were strong there. They're not as strong there, and it shows. So, uh, I don't see it. I see where you're coming from on that one now. I'm going to take a look at their roster real quick. I kind of lost uh, sight of who their receivers are anymore. Is it me so. I'm uh, not going Because I'm like, is, if they weren't Calvin Johnson, I didn't care. So. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I also have to say something while guys are retiring so early. Like, Megatron was, what, 30? Well, you like you used to say before, that was the magic number for running backs. Yeah, yeah. but he was a receiver, though. Receivers last longer. You would think. There has... Yeah. Well, depending on how their play style and a whole bunch of other stuff and how many injuries they get. But for a guy to, like, retire in his prime, that's like Durant retiring right now. That's like Kevin Durant retiring right now. Well, you know why he said he retired, right? Uh, I don't know. I didn't even remember. He was getting tired of losing. And I guess he didn't feel like going to another team. But, mm. Oh, yeah, so he didn't want to pretty much end up like Andre Johnson. Again, yeah. Played for a bad team for so many years, and then once he leaves, he's not the player he used to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, makes sense. I mean, hey, I would retire, you know, and then try to, you know, pull up Marshawn Lynch. 
Oh, well, hold on now. Well, he's back it. now, so. Exactly, and he's playing for a team he wants to. So, uh, listen, I wouldn't mind retiring for a year and then, you know, go play for a team you want to play for. Well, he's actually, from what I'm seeing, I'm reading this article right now. It says he wants to play with Derek Carr, but suggests he be playing football if Lions released his contract. Hmm. They probably won't. No in Detroit how, you know, greedy they are and they never get anything good. They're going to hold on to that contract. Looks over at Matt Stafford. You, you don't get anything good, huh? I'm not, I apologize for the way. Oh, we were talking about the Lions, Al. We're talking about, like, where do we see them uh, going? I, I said playoffs. I think Dev said that Mark and Dev said they're not making the playoffs. Who? Uh, the Lions. No, the Lions are not making a playoff. This is going to be between the Packers and the Vikings. Um, um, the Lions, I think. Did they make? You the mean the Vikings year? and the Vikings? So, no, I said the Packers and the Vikings. The uh, Vikings and the Vikings. The Vikings can only beat themselves. <laughs> the Vikings will beat the Vikings. Trust me on this. There will be one winner. Oh but yeah, and much. it'll be the Vikings. <laughs> no, for the pack. <laughs> no, for the backers and the Vikings, so the, those are the two that are going to be competing in the like wildcard game. Uh, um, do I? Th- I just don't see anything in the Lions. Did they even get any good wide receivers right now? Uh, from what did what did you check out, Mark? Did you see any? Uh, I didn't see any names that I really that really stuck out to me. So. They should have went after Brandon Marshall hardcore. That would have been perfect. Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, I mean, but New York has him, so what are you going to do? Wait, wait. I mean, uh, they do have that one receiver. The Lions have that one receiver. Who's that, Calladay? No, Golden Tate. They have Golden Tate. Yeah. They do? Yeah. Yeah, well, Mm -hmm. hey, guys, there's the one, see? He's a great receiver, but they use him as, like, a number three instead of he should be a number one. But anyways... So oh, let's go down to our predictions for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, J360 Legion. I would continue on with the rest of the episode, but we ran out of time, so this one's going to be a two-parter. Part two will follow up tomorrow afternoon. I would like to thank our special guest, Mark McCaffrey, for joining us for this episode and the next one. I'm going to leave a link in the description box so you can check out some of his work because the man is good at what he does. Not only is he a musician, he's also a filmmaker and an actor. The man's got skills. He's going to make it big. Outside of all that, folks, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all tomorrow for episode 16. And on behalf of the Cyclone crew, this is Jay signing off.